I like the new studio. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. You look further away from me. That's probably not a bad thing. Not a right? good or bad thing. <laughs> um, I will say that. Um, that yeah, this is nice. This is nice. I like this. Uh, did I just tear off half of your jokes about me now? Nope. Like IKEA? Nope. It's okay. Como estas Morano? <laughs> Did you right. say Morano or Milano? <laughs> Morano. There you work. You're driving a Morano. <laughs> I am. <laughs> ah, damn it. Entertained. Subscribe now. All right. So, Adventures with Dan, which I think is just an awesome YouTube handle. That's the greatest. That's one of the greatest YouTube. Handles. It's 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 a great YouTube handle because you could literally do anything, and it's considered in scope with your YouTube <laughs> handle name. It's like today I'm gonna go wrestle a meerkat. I'm like, oh, it's Adventures with Dan. Do 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 do. It doesn't matter. You can do anything you want. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to judge. He I mean, does. That's not a judgy. That's, I apologize. Oh, God, that was um, do you think Kelly's no huddle offense would be productive in the current ways defenses scheme? Um, we talk a lot about going back to that, right? I heard an argument the other day to say was, you know, uh, the Mario Williams, Jerry Hughes, Marcel Darius, was that a greater defensive front than the 90s run Ooh. where you had Bruce and Jeff Wright and, you know, where, what was a better defensive front? And my initial thought was you can't compare those two. It's a different generation of football, mm -hmm. right? You look at the early 90s football and you look at the, the early 2000s football, it, it's a, even though they're only separated by a decade or you know, 10, 15 years, um, in some cases, it, they're, it's a totally different generation of football. However, I, the Bills have brought in Kelly to talk to Allen. Okay. And it was about some of the nuance of the no huddle offense. Okay. So the Bills think there's value there, right? So when you start talking about defensive schemes, things have changed the last, even the last four years with the way defenses run defenses okay. across the board. So do you think Kelly's no huddle offense would be effective with the way that teams are scheming defensively now? Well, it would have to depend on something that's a very big strength of the Buffalo Bills right now, and it's quality control. Yep. So you have to know what your defense would probably be in in certain formations that you have and how they would react to that. The benefit of having a no-huddle offense is you force the defense to do simplify their game plan. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to come out, if you know, if, if a defense knows you're going to come out in a no-huddle, they're going to come out in nickel. The, the thing was, it was so revolutionary when Kelly and everybody were, were doing it was that guys couldn't adjust, and they were getting he was getting the passes out so fast. Mm -hmm. Who does that sound like now? When they run no huddle. I, it's like a Patriots channel half the time in this room. I know, chart. right? But that's, that's what he does. Right. Yeah. Dable coming from there knows the, the benefits of that and, and says, listen, the guy that used to call his own plays and run it, he's in our backyard. Why not talk to him sure. about how, even though we can adjust it to, to, to re, and reformat it to what's going on in today's NFL, right. you simplify other things for Allen mm -hmm. if you do that. You right. go no huddle, and the teams can't adjust them. They can't adjust this and that. So they have to play very base packages. Now, there are other teams that are going to be very complex in that in that respect, saying, okay, we know what they're going to do. We're going to adjust to this. You sub, you can't sub as much. Right. So the guys that like playing those really rotational fronts like the Bills, mm -hmm. they can't sub out. That's right. It's very difficult. Um, well, and I think that's, that's where things are kind of fascinating and, and what's changed from back in the day, right? So back in the day, the Bills would look to take advantage of when teams went to nickel, yeah. right? Because it was a sub package. So you got a guy out there playing, and he's playing a position that he doesn't play all that much, right? It's situ it was a situational defense. So the Bills would look to take advantage of when teams switched to nickel. Now, you have to look at that in another way. You have to look at taking advantage because most teams play 60 to 65% nickel. Now that's that's really the base defense of most teams yeah. is a nickel. Yeah. 
So now if you're going to run the no huddle, you have to look at their base defense almost and saying, okay, this is what we got to keep on the field. We got to keep their base on the field and spread them thin because that's yeah. where the advantage yeah. comes. So it's a different thought process from what Kelly used to do versus what you do now. Same theory. It just, you're looking to expose different parts of, of a defense uh, in 2019 compared to 1994. I think that the most glaring defense you have though is that it didn't happen immediately mm -hmm. for the Bills and that team like unlike most teams now because there's so much turnover with certain <laughs> positions and certain teams now because of the salary cap and everything Kelly Reed Lofton Metzlards Thurman they were together for a yeah. long time so yeah. they were able to develop so much familiarity with what they mm -hmm. would like to run and how they knew guys would be in certain spots that's what made it so successful um well, and they, those guys even said there were times where you'd get into the huddle and you just knew what the play was. It just you, you've done it so many times. Yeah. You've been doing it Especially for years. The line was like, together too. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I mean, why why Ken Hall is not mentioned as one of the best centers in, in the history of the game? I don't know why because it was just as much him calling the protections than it was Kelly calling the plays. I think I think that's masked because of all the stars. all the production stars. You know what I mean? I mean, but I don't understand it. Free, free, uh, uh, his name Mike Webster, the center for the, the Steelers that they won for. I mean, you talk about the Steel Curtain, Bradshaw, Swan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, Stallworth and everything. Mike Webster's a, a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. I mean, why isn't Hall getting any kind of recognition? Because they I didn't agree. win for like, but that, that I was standing. The, the differences that are going to happen is that there are kind of, defenses are so much more complex, mm -hmm. and that's what Dable and Allen are going to have to adjust to if they want to try to run no huddles. But the reason why you run a no huddle is you keep the defense in one specific area. Mm -hmm. and you say, okay, we can attack this defense that they run. Right. Let's try to run it. But that familiarity, I don't think is there yet. I, I think that's mm -hmm. going to be a struggle for them to try to run a no huddle. From a personnel standpoint, I think they've built the personnel to do it because you can run out an 11 personnel. And again, just to break this down, I think we should probably do a series on this kind of stuff. But 11 personnel is one tight end, one running back. But okay. it's the other way. It doesn't matter. No, yeah, you identify the running back. Oh first. yeah, that's sorry, sorry. Right. I I explained that backwards. Sorry. So it's one running back, one tight end. Okay. So a lot of times you'll see on the sidelines there's big yellow signs where there's one dude's job that his whole job is to see who comes out from from the offense when they're when the Bills are playing defense to throw up what the what the formation is. So it's twenty one, it's you know eleven, it's whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. So the Bills have the personnel to run eleven out of a no huddle, no problem. If you include Dawson Knox as the tight end. Like because it. Dawson Knox could go and in, go into an H back if you want to go in into a two back set, right? Could um, Dawson Knox can split out wide because he's a pretty quick tight end. He could stay tight to the line, so Dawson Knox allows you that in ability that order, to though, shift. Right. In that order is how I like him. Right. You put him at the end. You put him H back, and if you had to mm -hmm. split him out wide, I don't. Right. What I'm saying is that yeah. those are looks that you couldn't really do last year, right? You could do them with Kroom, I suppose, right? Kroom is, when are they going to tell him, to everyone, he's a wide out? He's, he's a, a wide he's, receiver. He's just a big wide receiver. I know. Um, you know, but again, you're looking at, if you're going to do that, you're looking at, depending on Kroom or Knox, which have one NFL season combined right now. Right? So mm -hmm. that's a lot to ask of a player to be that integral part. But Kroom or Knox allows you the ability to go into a no huddle and give different looks and ru even run the same play three times in a row, but just give different looks the whole time. Do you think that's why they're starting to run the no huddle a little bit more? Is because they want to force these guys to learn it as fast as they can? Possibly, yeah. You got. I mean, you, you throw them in the water and you see if they sink or swim. You, know, you got to know who can pick the stuff up. I mean, Shula did that with Marino. Sure. He, he made him call his own plays in practice, and it forced him to memorize yeah. what, what I know what the plays were. Sure. Um, I, so I like I like that the fact that even though you do have a young such a young tight end squad, uh, they don't know the difference. Right. All right, let's run a no huddle. You right. Know what I mean, and you know you've got um, you've got the ability in no huddle just to script it. Right, and that takes advantage of quality control, because which all, is so strong. Right, exactly. The Bills' quality control is just phenomenal. So, running the no huddle—that's exactly what you're doing. Is you're running scripted plays. You're putting the strength back into quality control to say, okay, listen, we're going to run this package right now. Here are your, here are your, here's the next five plays. Here yeah. they are. It's already scripted, right? You're you're just running a new script, and that's one of the strengths of the Bills. So, 
in that instance, no huddle makes a lot of sense because you're just getting back. If you're in the middle of the, th- you're, you know, you're in the middle of the third quarter, you're just going back to what you know is going to work in quality exactly. control. Yeah. So, bread and butter th- plays. Right, exactly. So there's a there's a lot of pluses there. Plus, in no huddle, if you start running different formations in no huddle, you can really run the same plays a couple times and just in different looks. It's going to change the way the defense spreads. I'm so proud of you. I'm just saying. I'm so you know? proud. That's what the EP system is predicated on. Right, exactly. Different formations. Right, exactly. And the Bills have the versatility to be able to do that. Um, the they question do. is, I don't know if Allen has the ability to do it just yet. You bite your tongue. Uh, I think it's no, a fair. I, I think it, it's a fair thing to bring up. It is a very, it is a big concern because that's going to be one of the biggest obstacles that he has. I mean, you want to talk to me about what is the biggest thing that Allen. What's going to be his biggest asset going into 2019? It's not his arm. It's not his legs. It's his eyes. Right. That's the thing I'm more concerned about with Allen is his eyes. How fast do you get it, buddy? Now, we're going to put all of these different toys and stuff around you to try to help you. We're going to rebuild the line. We have Morris taking care of line calls. You don't have to worry about that yet. We have Shady behind you to call different protections if you need it because uh, he knows when to stay in, when to not. Right. Or same, same deal. He'll know right. when to stay in and protect and when, when right. to not. Hearing, hearing the line call. Now you have all these veteran wide receivers, not top, not top tier guys, mm-hmm. but they're guys that know what to do. Right. Now it's yours. Well, and let me ask this. So with the depth across all positions right now, is it possible that no huddle just becomes a package where that's TJ Yeldon's package? You're going to go no huddle. You're putting TJ Yeldon in because you can split Yeldon out wide, mm-hmm. right? He's a pass catching back. He can run the football. That's a package for Dawson Knox. If, Do- if let's say Kroom and Lee Smith are the two starters, Dawson Knox is your third tight end. Is that his package? So that way they go in and they're all scripted plays. There's eight scripted plays. They're going to run them bang, 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 mm-hmm. out, right? Hmm. Is that what they do with them? Is that what they do with Foster? Is that what they do with, you know, some of these some of these guys that are a little bit more on the fringe of the roster? Is that what they do with Duke Williams? Say, listen, we're going to put you in a position to be successful. You're going to run these eight plays in succession, period. That's it right now. And you give them I... opportunities to be successful. McDermott's always guarded the young players yeah. and put them in situations once he felt they could be successful. A no-huddle offense would do that if they're all scripted like that. If you're going to run it no matter what the base defense is, you're just saying, okay, they're giving us the look we want right now. It's time to run that package. And you put those guys in, it gives them that opportunity to be successful right away. I like that, but let me just put a little, I mean, I like that philosophy. It's a great philosophy to have. These guys, but, but the offense that's being built, it's not like, you know, we talked about it la- a little bit last week. Mm-hmm. When you're a high school coach, you have to design an offense to the players that you have because right. you can't choose who they are. Right. You're in the NFL. You're picking guys to fit into your system. So sure. they're already going to have those plays predicated on the guys that come in. They know they can right. do those those things. If I'm coming in with a blank slate, and I don't know, I have no clue what the Bills might run, because mm-hmm. I have an inclination they're probably doing with the Earnhardt Perkins system. I mean, I keep banging that drum, but I think that if I didn't have a clue what they were doing, mm-hmm. that's 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 a great formula to have. Is like, listen, all right, eight plays, boom, boom, boom. No, these, boom, boom, boom. boom. You're coming in, and this, the, the the EP system though is predicated on just knowing the route concepts. Mm-hmm. So they could just be flying in four guys each time, just randomly, mm-hmm. whoever it is. All Doesn't right, matter. next four up. Right. Yeldon. All right, you're the, you're the slot guy on this side. Here's what you're going to do. On a side note, did Yeldon have more catches than carries last year? Yeah. So you could use that to your advantage in your system mm-hmm. and then put him out in a doubles look. I'm always mm-hmm. using doubles. I know. Like one of the easiest things. You put him in a slot on this side in the doubles. In the middle of Allen's cadence, you drop him back. Mm-hmm. To running back and then give yeah. him the ball. Yep. All right. And then you got an H back on the left side. I'm saying, I, you know, I know enough guys. So you got three guys on this side. You have Yeldon in the slot. You just kind of motion him back and you have him run the ball. Right. Like, yeah. that's, that'd be a great, one of those great plays. A little, okay, Yeldon, this is yours because they think mm-hmm. we're going to pass it. You're in, but you're actually going to run the ball. And you can run the ball, like you said. However, with the system that's being put in place, these guys have to know all different kinds of concepts. So I wouldn't be surprised if. Like you said, they're putting Knox at, out, out wide. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're putting a couple. They're putting Gore in the slot, mm-hmm. and they'll have him just blocked down. Or they'll probably have put uh, the, different uh, combinations of wide receivers. They may be having putting. They may be putting Foster in the slot and Brown on the outside on this side just to terrify sure. somebody. You know what I mean? Yep. So that could be all the different combinations just to get familiar with the system that's being implemented. Mm-hmm. And 
the more familiar you become with it, the more likely you can run a no huddle type of offense. The, to cut the legs out on my own argument, right? Because I I didn't do that. No. <laughs> There's the one nail in the coffin, and we didn't get there yet. It's chemistry with your wide receivers, right? Once Excellent. you start saying, okay, well, let's get, build a package for these guys because it's the only time they're going to get on the field right now, mm-hmm. that that disrupts the chemistry that you have with the players that are your starters, and it disrupts the chemistry with the players who aren't your starters because you're going to run out a whole troop of new guys um, that Allen's going to throw, what, target twice a game? You know, like it's, well, no, it's I, hard to build chemistry that well, way. Well, I don't mind. If I was Dable and I was – if I had control of this, and I don't know, I don't. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not an NFL coach, but the point is this: I would be throwing it like if I know what Knox can do, mm-hmm. I'm throwing him into scenarios where I think, okay, could he? Right. All right, just flank him out wide. How does he deal with Trey White jamming him? Mm-hmm. Okay. How does he deal with with Poy or High dropping down in the box well, when he's in the slot? And that's a big advantage for the Bills is but they have I'm a saying. top defense. Exactly. These guys. You have a chance to go up against them. Now, you don't think that inherently, just go, stepping aside for a second, you don't think that inherently this offensive line is going to get better facing those four maniacs mm-hmm. if they happen to go one-on-ones? Mm-hmm. Good Lord. Yeah. There's there's a very, very big possibility that things could, that this offense could really develop, right? Um, yeah. Hey, Based if, on the players that they have to play in, if the, uh, in practice. If yeah. the only defensive line they can't handle is the one they stare across That's fine. three days That's a fine. week, Take I'm it. fine. That's fine. <laughs> But to get back and circle back to the point, um, the no huddle, there's there's very large pieces of the no huddle that, that still work in today's game, right? Mm-hmm. You just have to look to exploit different parts than you did back in 94 and 95. It's just, yes, the concept still works, right? But the implementation is just not the same. Mm-hmm. You know, you just have to look yeah. to exploit different things. From a base philosophy standpoint, though, yeah, I think the no huddle still holds a lot of ground because New England's been doing it for a long time. You see Brady do it all the time. They walk out and, you know, in 21 personnel, and then all of a sudden they've got five, they're five wide, and you're like, what, 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 what? what? And you know, like, you know for a fact, right, that their fullback is not getting the football. Devlin's not catching the football, but he's out wide, so you got to cover him. You can't not cover him. Yeah, more, more than likely Brady gives it to him in, on a dive for two yards. Just like, hey, we're up by twelve. Yeah, let's give another yep. t- another yeah. week. Let's put let's put you on film. Here you go. <laughs> right. You're welcome. Right. However, you know it's New England's been running part concept of the no huddle for a long time, and it does work. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think versatility. This is the first time the Bills have had the versatility in their offense to be able to even think about it. Yeah. Um, the question just becomes how much can Allen handle. But can it work? Adventures with Dan? I think it can. It's all about the eyes, man. You can watch Alan's eyes. It'll tell you the story.